Thank you for tuning in to the Hope, Strength, Courage podcast. Love and support for parents whose kids are fighting for their lives. A weekly podcast created to support parents and caregivers of children diagnosed with cancer, where you will find resources collected to help you face each day with hope, strength, and courage. From interviews with the top experts in their fields, doctors, psychologists, chaplains, and inspiring frontline workers in pediatric oncology as they share their best advice, as well as day-to-day advice collected from other cancer moms and leaders in personal growth and development. From individuals who understand how hard it can be, I hope you will feel better prepared to cope with the day-to-day challenges of caring for your child. Hi, I am Laura Lane, and I am your host. My own daughter, Celeste, was diagnosed with cancer at the age of 12. In 2015, I wrote about our experiences in the book, Two Mothers, One Prayer, Facing Your Child's Cancer with Hope, Strength, and Courage. Since that time, I have dedicated thousands of hours to share with other parents and caregivers the resources, tools, tips, and skills and strategies I learned that helped our family stay happier, healthier, and more hopeful. My goal is to share with you my interviews with experts to support you as you care for a child with cancer. Today's episode features my interview with international best-selling author and cancer survivor, Annie Poole, as we discuss how to turn your child's cancer journey into an adventure. It's such a fun interview with great ideas you can implement with your kids right away. I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. I am pleased to introduce you to Annie Poole. Annie is an international best-selling author of Passport to Life, How I Overcame Incurable Cancer Through the Power of Travel. In 2013, Annie was diagnosed with incurable cancer, and she turned an insurmountable obstacle into an opportunity. Drawing on her life-changing travels abroad, Annie daily visualized her cancer journey as an exciting travel experience. Within less than six months, she changed her incurable cancer diagnosis into a passport to life and became completely cancer-free. Thank you, Annie. I'm so glad to have you with us today. Thank you, Laura. It's such a pleasure to be here. That's great. I, um, I'm really excited to get to know you, and I'm sure our audience is as well. So if you would start out by telling us a little bit about yourself and um, the, the journey that you have gone, gone through. Thank you, Laura. I'd be happy to do that. Um, in 2013, like you, like you read in my bio, I was diagnosed with incurable cancer. And this took place when I was recovering in the uh, recovery room. I'd just gone through extensive surgery to remove the cancerous tumor in my abdomen. And I was just coming to, actually. And the oncologist was there by my bedside as I was opening up my eyes. And to me, I thought this was a good sign. I thought I was very hopeful that my journey with cancer was almost over. So then she started to tell me, your your surgery was successful, she said, and we removed the, the tumor from your abdomen. But... She said, your cancer has spread to the lymph nodes and the upper aorta. It's stage 3C4. And then she said two words that hit me like a, like a ton of bricks. She said, it's incurable. And to me, just hearing those words, it's incurable, really just lit a fire underneath me that really was a turning point in my life. So many might think it it was a terrible thing that she did, but she really gave me a gift because it was in that moment that I made a powerful decision. And, you know, in my anger, I was pretty upset Mm -hmm. (laughs) that uh, she left me with those, those devastating words and at such a time like that. But I just determined in my mind, I said, You'll see. Just you wait and see. You'll be astounded because I'm going to live and not die. And I'm going to thrive and not just merely survive. Wow. 
so um, from that point on, then, I, I just determined um, I was going to find a way. And eventually I did, because I had been writing this book about travel. And the book was originally going to be about how, um, how a person could overcome the post-vacation blues. I had gone on this amazing six-month travel experience in Italy and Ireland in 2011. And it, it was just such a life-transforming experience that um, by the time I got back home to my hometown in Victoria, B.C., my life completely tanked. And I struggled for so long that I started to realize, well, happy isn't a place in Europe. <laughs> you know, it's not Italy. It's not Ireland. It must have been something inside me that I did. So I started to go back to those experiences and pull apart the gold nuggets, like search for the gold nuggets that I had found and uh, started to write about it. And I realized I had a book. Mm -hmm. So it was at that time of being a, a diagnosed with incurable cancer that I, I was in the midst of writing this book. I had these really big dreams for my life. And simultaneously, you know, while I determined I was going to thrive and not just merely survive, there was also this, this other feeling that was coming up, you know, this feeling of it being so unfair. What? <laughs> you know, I'm on the cusp of my dreams. How can, how can this happen right now? It just felt so, like such poor timing, really. So, um... Going back to the book that I was writing, I started to look at it and think, well, if travel was that life transforming, then perhaps I can apply the principles that I that I encountered on my own travels, apply them to my cancer journey, and if it's successful, well, that's an even better book. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I started to do. I started to treat my cancer experience as an adventure. You know, as you well know, through your daughter, um, if you've been diagnosed with cancer, the time of, of treatment is, is rather indefinite. It could be up to two years. Sometimes, in some cases, it's up to five years. Mm -hmm. So it was a self-imposed time off with cancer, and uh, that's what made me think, well, I've got this time off. I may as well treat it like a travel experience, like I'm going somewhere. Mm -hmm. So I didn't go anywhere, but I just traveled in my imagination. I used my former my former travel experiences and brought them into my everyday experience, and just used them to visualize that I was still traveling to so, Italy and Ireland. Okay, so. So explain to me how this works. So you're you're in your hospital bed still, or you're in your home, right? Well, at this point, I had recovered from surgery. I'm now home. Okay. And um, I had decided to take three cycles of chemo, although I was recommended to do much more than that. Mm -hmm. Nine cycles of, of chemo, six to nine cycles, and up to 60 uh, radiation treatments. Right. But I just did three. So... Um, yeah, while I was uh, going through treatment then, that's when I started to treat the whole experience as an adventure. And chemo was part of, of uh, seeing it as a big adventure. Mm -hmm. So when I went for treatment, I, I looked at the chemo chairs as first-class seats in an airplane. Oh, cool. Yeah, like cancer was going to be the very vehicle that was going to take me to where I wanted to go. Okay. Which is yeah. traveling around the world again. Mm -hmm. so, 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 so take us through this experience. You, you've got to go for your treatment. You sit down in the chair. They're obviously, um, probably intravenously, you're getting an, in, or getting an injection. Yes. And, and tell us step by step, what did you do? How did, how did you make this into an adventure on those days? Well, it was a lot of preparation beforehand. I listened to songs that reminded me of Italy and Ireland. Predominantly Italy, though. Mm -hmm. um, 
I, I visited like a little cafe that would remind me of, of being in Italy. And, um, and I would put up my requests on Facebook. That was, that was like my prayer chain or my, my cheering squad, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, while, I was in the, yeah. while I was in the chemo room, it was so nice to see everybody's Facebook posts and say, you know, we're cheering for you, either giving me their amens or their, you know, you can do it <laughs> kind of thing. So, um, by the time I got to the chemo room, then, yeah, I would view the seats as first class seats in an airplane. And then I would also, you know, with my friend, we told each other adventure stories. So by the, by the end of that day, she, she told me, you know, this didn't even feel like we were in the chemo room. We just had such a lovely time together. Uh-huh. And so did you spend some time visualizing while you're in the chair? What, uh, like, were some of the places that you went in your mind? Um, yeah, I, I definitely went to Italy. And, uh, yeah, in my mind, I um, just vis- uh, imagined them going to to some of the museums that I loved and meeting some of the people that were important in my mind. But it wasn't just a past thing. It was also um, having a having a clear vision of what I wanted to do in the future. Oh, okay. So, so you, were, you were imagining yourself that, okay, once this is all done, I'm going back there, and this is yeah. the experience that I'm going to have. So you're, yeah. you're, you're visualizing now what it is that you want to do. So you obviously have to be well enough. You're visualizing yourself well enough in order to do those things as well. Yeah, exactly. That's awesome. Which is where I am right now, actually, Laura. <laughs> I'm back in Ireland. <laughs> Which I think is just incredible. That's wonderful. Yeah. yeah, so I've just been here for four days, and, and so far it's been amazing. Uh-huh. So. Um, what were your favorite memories? To Like, what were the things that you really tell? Share with us what were you most engaged in? in your mind of this is where I really want to go and, and show us the picture that you created in your mind. Okay. The picture that I created was, was just, um, well, actually it had to do with a song and it was like music is very important to me. I'm, I'm a very visual kind of, uh, artistic person. Right. Mm-hmm. So. And, um, and the auditory as well, I assume. Yeah. Auditory as well. So there was a song that I that I played constantly just before my chemo treatments, uh-huh. and it was a song called um, oh "Shoot." I just had a memory blank. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Um, it was by Bruce Springsteen. Uh, oh, "Meet Me at Mary's Place." Okay. And the song now it's got kind of an Irish flavor, but he's singing it in Spain in Barcelona. Okay. It was, yeah. It's a particular song that I brought up on YouTube mm-hmm. and while he's singing it in Spain you know he's using some words that make me feel like he's in Italy you know silencio yeah. and uh, it's just this song with, with such a powerful message and he starts mm-hmm. off very quiet and he just builds and builds and builds and builds the song to like this powerful crescendo and the message is meet me at Mary's place there's going to be a party And he talks about how he brings in all these elements to keep his dream alive. He's got seven pictures of Buddha. Um, The prophets are on his tongue. Seven seven angels of mercy crying. I'm trying to remember the words. But (laughs) anyways, he brings in all these elements to to build his faith. Mm -hmm. Because his big goal is meet me at Mary's place. We're going to have a party. Yeah. And that was what I was visualizing, was being back in these magical places, Italy and Ireland, and just having a party with friends near and far and celebrating, not only have I survived cancer, but I've just created this, this life. This fulfilling life. And everyone is just delighting in the joy of it. Mm-hmm. So that was the big image that I kept in my mind. Well, that's awesome. So... 
I just, yeah, I think that's just so phenomenal. There's so many tools that in, in what you have just shared. So my next question is, what is the advice that you would give to parents whose children have cancer? What is it that you think that they can do with their own children um, as they go through um, their cancer treatments? Okay, well, the first tip I would give for parents as well as kids going through cancer, first tip number one is treat it like an adventure. Now, you might not feel like it at the time, but as you well know, there are lots of people, celebrities and just regular people who have come through a cancer journey that can honestly say it was a gift. It was the best thing that ever happened to them in their lives. So is that is that what you feel for yourself, Annie? Oh, absolutely. And same with the oncologist. She gave me a gift. I mean, I wouldn't have been able to create such an amazing life after cancer without her saying to me those two words in that very vulnerable moment. Mm -hmm. So um, going back to treating it like an adventure, um, it's so important that when you change your perspective, things change. So treat it like an adventure, and then I'm going to give you some tools on how to treat it like an adventure. Okay. So the second tip is see yourself as a superhero. Now that's important because going through this journey, you're going to get amazing superpowers that you never knew you had before. And you might not feel like it at the time because, you know, you've just been diagnosed with cancer. You could be lying on a hospital bed. You know, you can't go to school. A lot of things factor in that make you feel like, you know, I'm not a hero. I'm, I'm sick. How can, you, how can I think of myself as a hero? So I would say the next thing is tip number three, find a hero to inspire you to believe that you can do the same. So and the who, thing, who did you have as a superhero? Who was the hero that inspired you, Annie? Well, I was looking for a superhero that had overcome incurable cancer, and I couldn't find any at the time. So what I did was, because travel was so important to me, I then chose a superhero like Elizabeth Gilbert. She wrote the book Eat, Pray, Love, mm -hmm. and so watched Eat, Pray, Love dozens of times. Uh, also, Under a Tuscan Sun. To me, those two women were superheroes to me. You know, they created a beautiful life out of the, shed, the pieces of nothing, so yeah. to speak. So, um, going back to being a superhero, uh, yeah, just find a superhero that you resonate with and drink in their story until it becomes your own. And then Tip number four that I want to share is how you do that is you just take little steps every day to build on that faith. Pretend that you are that superhero. Like for me, I watched Under a Tuscan Sun, Eat, Pray, Love all the time. It, it, those things made it easy to step into that experience of becoming a superhero. Mm -hmm. I can imagine for parents, they're... I know when, when my daughter Celeste was in the hospital, we had access to movies galore. They had a whole cupboard that you could just, um, if, if she, the days that she was well enough to go down the hallway and to go look in that cupboard and say, okay, this is the movie I want, or this is the movie I want, and, um, or she'd send me down and say, mom, go find out if they have such and such. And children have that opportunity in the hospital. They can, and they love to do it, watch something yeah. over and over again. So find something that inspires them that that who they want to be like between the Disney movies and the superhero movies that are out there. There's so many, whether that's Batman, Superman, the Avengers, the X-Men, or some of the incredible um, superheroes in Dis the Disney world. So there's Frozen, there's, um, there's, okay, I'm dating myself, but Aladdin. <laughs> and um, there's uh, Buzz Lightyear and, and Woody and, um, a Toy Story, those are incredible. Even Dory, with the new Finding Dory movie after Finding Nemo, those are incredible. Yeah. Because the adventures that they go on, and 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 Dory really is a superhero. She's incredible what she overcomes and who she becomes. 
um, yeah. through her, her journeys and are willing to go through that adventure. Exactly. Yeah. That's, that's a great tip. So. Well, and I would say there's one more thing you got to do. Okay. In order to remind yourself that you are a superhero, find something that you can wear or put on yourself that makes you feel like a superhero. So for me, I, I kind of um, drew on Dorothy and her sparkly red shoes, right? Oh, cool. That every time she wore her sparkly red shoes, she put them together and they transported her to magical places. Mm -hmm. So um, I couldn't find red sparkly shoes. <laughs> Besides, it was winter. So what I did find, because it was close to Christmas, was I, I found this... Um, uh, they were skin tight. <laughs> They looked really hot, but they were a pair of sequined, sparkly, like, neat, this deep, deep blue sequined, sparkly pants. Okay. And every time I wore them, I felt like a million bucks. So I would wear them to the grocery store or just shopping around town. And whenever I wore them, people would say, wow, you look, you look incredible. And when I said, well, you... You probably would never guess, but I had chemo the other day, and they would just, you know, their eyes would, or their, their mouths would drop mm -hmm. to the floor, because, mm -hmm. you know, it helped me to exude this vibrant energy that I wanted to step into, even though I had just had chemo. Yeah. That sounds like advice that um, moms and dads need as well, that... That moms and dads helping their child through this are superheroes. Yeah. Their kids are superheroes for sure. And and that gets talked about all the time, that these kids overcoming cancer, that they are superheroes. But we've got some superhero sidekicks. Their moms and dads are fabulous too. Absolutely. Um, it sounds like parents need to put on their sort of Robin outfits to support their Batman. Yeah. It, you know, Laura, it could be a cape. It could be a a wand that they buy, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, the imagination is limitless, right? Yeah. But it has to be something that you resonate with, and you'll know it. Yeah, and and, and I, it seems like to me that kids would find that fun, that we're, kid, we're helping them to be superheroes, but if mom and dad can be the superhero sidekicks and be a part of it, that just expands it for their world and just Absolutely. makes it even more, helps them to get right into that role. And knowing yeah. that, okay, they've got a team around them. They've got a, a whole support team that if they're the Avengers, if you've got if you've got Captain America, if your kid is Captain America and, um, and mom and dad are um, Iron Man and um, oh, Black Widow, um, just to kick ass. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Career or sidekicks to, to help them through this or... Uh, yeah. Maybe one of their brothers is the Hulk, and, and um, that knowing that they have a whole team, that they're do beating this together. Um, Absolutely. And, you know, transform the way you look at or your child looks at things like a CT scan or a PIC line, you know, with, a, with say, a PIC line and chemo treatments or radiation, you're getting injected with superpowers. Yeah. Right, See, just like Spider Man. Yeah, he got bitten by the uh, by the spider who was been he'd been radiated, and it gave him his yeah. superpowers. Or your CT scan could be like your magic vehicle, your your Batmobile that takes you uh, to yeah to the land of your adventures, the land of your dreams. Yeah, that would be so. Cool. It's important once again to have a picture of what you'll look like at the end of your journey. Oh, cool. awesome. Yeah. So this is this has been so incredible, Annie. Thank you so much. Is, do you have any other advice, or can we finish with um, where people can learn more about you and your your book? Well, I think I think that's that's the most important thing is is uh, you know see it as a big adventure, see yourself as a hero, find an object that reminds you that you're a superhero, mm -hmm. step into your vision with those steps every day. And you will transform this into an adventure. Be inspired by someone that helps you to think of yourself as a hero. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This has been You're welcome. 
That was such a fun interview. I'm sure you could hear it in my voice. If you need any superhero ideas for your family, please reach out to me. I'd love to help you brainstorm ideas. Please join me next week for my interview with Tom, with Tattoo Tom Mitchell, and our discussion about his ultra marathon fundraising and advocacy work he does for the Still Brave Childhood Cancer Foundation. Before we end our show today, we have one last segment. Over the last few years, I have asked other cancer moms what advice they wish they had known when their child was first diagnosed. I have compiled that information and will be sharing their advice each week. You can download the top 101 pieces of advice that I put together as a mini ebook at twomothersoneprayer.com. Today's advice comes from Heather. Heather says, make a game out of everything you possibly can overshadowing or padding that bad with a game you can help can help children focus on the good in order to get past the bad. Thanks, Heather, for sharing that. If you have advice you have learned along the way that you wish someone had told you weeks, months, or even years ago, I invite you to fill out the contact form on our website, twomothersoneprayer.com, and I will be sharing your advice with our listeners on future shows. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule today to listen to the Hope, Strength, Courage podcast. I look forward to sharing more experts and advice with you again next Wednesday. Please remember to take a minute to to subscribe to the show. Thanks also need to go out to our Hope, Strength, Courage production team, which consists of my wonderful assistant, Tracy Ogilvie McDonald, Andrew Braun at Braun Audio and Audio Geek, music by Fizz Anthony, social media support by Marife Constantino, and graphic design by Amy Hosmer. To learn more about myself, Laura Lane, and to order my book, please visit lauralane.ca.